Alright guys, we're Rob Rosslot and I am back today with my SummerSlam 2023 review. I think it's been a while since I've done a proper review of a, a WWE show, or any show for that matter, on this channel. Um, and usually, if the show ends up being really good, I'll tend to review it. Um, I do want to say a couple of things before I start this SummerSlam review. Uh, firstly, I did not watch this show completely in one part, or in one sitting. I uh, did not watch it live. Uh, I went to York yesterday morning, and that's quite a drive from where I live, so uh, I couldn't stay up all night and watch it. So I watched most of it in the car, and I watched some of it today. So this might make for this review being a little bit more challenging for me. Uh, there might be bits of matches I don't remember, but I will try my damnedest. Uh, second thing, the return of the makeshift blind. That's that's a good... Uh, that's a good thing. Means we're not getting horrible, horrible glare on the uh, on the screen. Um, thirdly, uh, big announcement. I'm going to be going to AEW's All In pay per view next month at Wembley Stadium. I am very excited. I've already gone out and bought my AEW t-shirts. Maybe I'll do a quick review or a quick video at the hotel after we get back from the show, just like a quick something, and then maybe when I come home. I will do a video just saying what the experience was like. Um, really excited to be going to, to All In. Of all the wrestling pay-per-views that have taken place in the UK the last year and a half, so Clash at the Castle, uh, Money in the Bank, and All In. All In's the one I'm, I've, I've wanted to go to the most. Uh, I don't know how often AEW will do shows in the UK. So if this is the only one for a decade or something like that, you know, for five years even... I'm happy to be going. Fingers crossed, uh, all that goes well. We've got a couple of matches announced for the show, so I'm super excited for that. Um, and the last thing I want to talk about is obviously last year in August, I uploaded a Platinum Journey log or a Platinum log uh, of my 2022 Platinums. Uh, this year, my goal is to get to 70 Platinum trophies. I'm currently on 65, shortly to be on 66. Um, but as, as, as soon as I get to 70, I'll try to upload a video to the channel. Uh, hopefully I can get to 70 pretty soon. If I get to 70 around Christmas, that'd be a nice way to end the year, actually. Because um, 70 is a game I'm specifically wanting to do for a bit of a challenge and a bit of a, a long one. So, um, fingers crossed we can get there. Uh, nothing else we want to talk about, so I guess we should start with our review. Uh, SummerSlam 2023, to me, on paper, before the show started, if you gave me that card of matches, I think this looks like one of the best cards in SummerSlam history. I've reviewed a lot of SummerSlams on this channel. I've reviewed 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 21. And this card looked better than all of those cards. Um, there's a lot of singles matches, uh, which is maybe why feels like a New Japan show sometimes, where it's just singles match, singles match, singles match, singles match. Uh, but there also wasn't a lot of matches. And I've heard a couple of people complain about the length of the show, like, oh, it was over four hours. To me, I know I've watched it in a couple of sittings, but four hours for a SummerSlam, I know there's a two-hour pre-show, but just skip it. There's no matches on it. It's not worth watching. Four hours for a SummerSlam show, especially with these sorts of matches, is actually okay. Um, I am a bit upset that we didn't get more women's matches. I think five women's performers across, you know, a 40 women's division is a bit of a shame, especially when there was no Trish Stratus, uh, Becky Lynch match, no Rhea Ripley match. You know, they could have put Rhea on against anyone and just had a killer in a couple of minutes. And actually, I think that would have been a good call. Um, but it's a bit of a shame that we didn't get more women's performers on this show. But overall, I think the card looks really, really good. So... Let's get into the show. The show opened. I've got the list of matches here on my phone. Fingers crossed I don't get anything wrong. Uh, the opening contest was Logan Paul, the Maverick, against Ricochet. Uh, I'm very happy that Ricochet has finally got a SummerSlam match. I think this is his first SummerSlam match. And it's against Logan Paul. The build for this has been okay. Uh, the Logan Paul shots at Samantha Irvin and Raw were very good. Um, you know, this match is basically about who can do the most flips. Like, that. that's basically... There's no story to this match, really. Um, they tried to make a teeny one, but it, it's just about 
being the most viral match. And, and that's what most of Logan's matches are. But, you know, the guy, Logan Paul, uh, Corey Graves said it perfectly on commentary, actually. He said, you may dislike him personally, but you cannot argue with his in-ring ability. And I was like, don't have to like him. Don't have to like him, but he puts on great matches. And this match with Ricochet, and, he, and he's part paired with, like, great workers. He's paired with Rollins and Reigns and Ricochet. This match here was another great Logan Paul match. It was basically... A, a spot match. So they just did spots. Logan at one point did a buckshot lariat to the outside of the ring, uh, which looked okay. And then he did like a springboard frog splash. He did a standing moonsault. Ricochet did a standing shooting star. And he did like a the thing where he do, goes for the people's elbow and then does a, a moonsault of his own. Ricochet hit the recoil at one point. He went for the, the shooting star press off the top rope, but Logan got the knees up. Logan was using his boxing experience. Uh, I hate it when they say that. He's had two fights. Yeah. Um, and that was like, you know, eh, they don't really, don't really care about them talking about his boxing experience. Um, but he was punching Ricochet, and obviously he's got the, the titanium screw in his right hand, and it was building towards that as the finish. Um, but that wasn't the finish. Uh, they did um, uh, a top rope. Oh, what did they do? Oh, they did a Spanish fly on the outside. They went for a Spanish fly off the apron at one point, and then they did the Spanish fly on the floor. Uh, I think Ricochet did the Spanish fly off the top rope to Logan. Um, but in the end, Ricochet, as I said, he hit the recoil. Oh, no, he also, Ricochet did two detonation kicks at one point. Actually, a bunch of super kicks and all that sort of stuff. But in the end, uh, Ricochet went for the 6.30 splash. Logan moved while the ref was checking on Ricochet. One of Logan's guys, as Michael Cole put it, uh, passed Logan some brass knucks. He punched Ricochet, hit the brass knucks, pinned Ricochet, one, two, three, put the brass knucks in his tights. And then Michael Cole basically summed the match up where he said, that was a great match, but that finish sucked. And all I could think was, yeah, pretty much. Uh, it was a great match. Uh, they did... It was a great match in sort of the parameters they'd been given. So this wasn't like a classic match. Uh, the, the Seth Rollins match at Mania with Logan was better because that match felt like it had a story in it and it and it built to things. And this match was just move, 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 move. And it was still great. I'm going to give it four stars. Great opener. One of the better SummerSlam opening matches of all time, uh, you know, with the Angle Ray match and the 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 um the Dolph Ziggler match with Seth Rollins at 2018. So great match, great way to open the show. SummerSlam was off to a good start. Second match on the show, I don't need to check. I remember this one because I was surprised how early it was. Second match on the show, and it was Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare, against Brock Lesnar. Uh, I should make no bones about this. I've been con con considering this in my mind for the, the last while. Um, is Cody Rhodes one of my favourite wrestlers of all time? I think he is. So there is personal bias probably towards his matches. And so is Brock. I, was, I should say so is Brock. Brock is an attraction. And he's so... Brock Lesnar matches are usually spectacles. Um, and the Cody matches they've had, I think, have been pretty good. I think they've both been pretty good. I preferred the Backlash one because it wasn't working around like an injured, pretend injured body part. Um, but this match here blew both those out of the water. This was an outstanding match. Uh, it was very simple. Probably the simplest match on the show. It actually went shorter than a lot of matches on the show. It went about 17 minutes. But this match was as simple. Brock Lesnar is the big bully who's going to kill Cody Rhodes all match. And he's going to German him, and he's going to belly to belly him, and he's going to suplex him, and he's just going to beat the crap out of Cody. He's going to toss him around. And Cody's going to get little spots here and there where he's going to come back, and that is going to be his match. So Brock would German, 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 belly to belly, throw Cody out of the ring, Cody would get back in. Brock would... German, 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 throw Cody out the ring, Brock would get, um, Cody would get back in the ring. Rock, Brock got out of the ring, f 5 Cody on the floor, Cody would get back in the ring at 9. Brock's starting to get really annoyed. f 5 Cody through the announce table, 
Cody would get back in the ring after. And it was all about Cody finally getting a chance. Hits a disaster kick. Hits a Cody cutter for a two count. Goes for the crossroads. Brock counters. I think he hits an F5 in the ring, but Cody kicks out. Goes for... Towards the end, like, he's going Germans. And they are doing really, really... The, the, the crowd were so into this. Like, Cody Rhodes... I tell you what, his matches maybe aren't the most technically proficient. There are better wrestlers in WWE and AEW and across the world, but the crowd love his matches. This, his storytelling is so good. His facials, his body language. I think that's probably why he's in my top 10 favorite wrestlers of all time. Like, his promos and stuff, I think he's the best promo in WWE. Like, honestly. Like, when he does promos, I always listen to his promos. Like, I, I think Zayn and, and Owens and Roman can all do good promos, but Cody's promos feel so real and natural. But anyway, I digress. Towards the end, uh, Brock locked in the Kimura, but Cody escaped. Uh, at one point, Brock went for a German and Cody pulled the top turnbuckle off. Brock, uh, Cody uh, escaped an F5, shoved Brock into that exposed turnbuckle, then put Brock in a Kimura of his own, but Brock powered out of it, went for the F5, Cody counted, slipped out the back, Crossroads, 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 three crossroads, one, two, three. Cody Rhodes beat Brock Les beats Brock Lesnar. Outstanding. I absolutely love this match. Bell to bell, best thing on the show. Uh, I'm not gonna kinda of spoil the rest of the show, but best thing on the show. I was so looking forward to this. Um and it delivered. Really delivered. Cody's big matches deliver. And Brock, probably the best Brock lies in the match as an actual match, like rather than the attraction thing that he had with Roman at SummerSlam last year. Probably the best Brock lies in the match for years. Absolutely years. Four and a half stars. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, and after the matchup, Brock Lesnar takes his gloves off, goes over to Cody, shakes his hand. Raises his arm, gives him a hug. The full-on respect, you know, the passing of the torch moment. Kurt Angle to Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 19. Brock Lesnar to Cody Rhodes at SummerSlam 2023. Outstanding match. Bell to bell, it was like four and a half stars. I loved the stuff after the match as well. But I only really rate bell to bell. So four and a half stars. Outstanding match. Honestly... Could have opened. And if it opens the show, it's the best match on the show. And they said it was one of four main events, so I was a bit surprised when it was that early in the show, but did not take away from the match's quality. Crowd loved it. I loved it. I love Cody Rhodes. I love Brock Lesnar. Super, super match. But I need to move on. Third match on the show, and this was when the crowd started to not care. MMA rules. Ronda Rousey versus Shayna Baszler. Shortest match on the show... And I actually think the women, Shayna and Ronda, did nothing wrong. Like, they presented the match very well. They did what they would do kind of in an MMA match or in a UFC fight or whatever. Um, the only issue was WWE's presentation of it. Because they basically, they had their own rules for it. So, so like, the, when a woman got knocked down... Like, the women just stepped back like it was a boxing fight, basically. And it was like, mm, if it's MMA rules, you should just be going... If the woman goes down, you get on top of her. You know, that's the way it is. Um, so that kind of hurt the match for me. But there were some good moments. Shayna hit a head kick on Ronda early, and that caught her on the ear. Ronda hit, like, that pop-up knee. And they went trading submissions. But in the end, Shayna locked Ronda in the Kirifuda clutch. Ronda tried to get out of it. Shayna blocked her arm. Ronda passed out. Shayna Baszler beats Ronda Rousey. If this is Ronda's swan song, she did the right thing on the way out. She gave a big win to her best friend or one of her best friends in Shayna Baszler. Um, as far as a match, though, I'm going to give it two and a half stars. Nothing they did was wrong. It was just the way WWE presented the match, which was wrong. Two and a half stars, then. It was okay. It was certainly not bad. I've seen uh, a couple of reviews of SummerSlam so far, because it's been out for a, a day. 
And a couple of people have said this is bad. This certainly wasn't a bad match. Um, fourth match on the show, which I've totally forgot what it was. Ah! How can I forget? Fourth match on the show, the Intercontinental Championship, as the Ring General Gunther takes on Drew McIntyre. Probably, I mean, I just said Cody and Brock was my most look forward to thing, but Gunther matches on big shows are always my most look forward to things. And this match, while not as good as the summer, the Mania Triple Threat, which it wasn't going to be, really. Uh, or it wasn't as good as the Sheamus match at Clash of the Castle either. This was still a great match. The two men went in there. You don't really need me to tell you what they did. They just slapped each other. Drew hit a future shock. Gunther hit a powerbomb for a near fall. There were lariats and chops. And both men had a big chop off at one point. And Gunther hit the splash for a near fall. Drew um, ducked uh, a massive chop from Gunther and hit the claymore and got a near fall off that. And that was towards the end of the match. Unfortunately, the crowd weren't really into this match as much as I'd have liked. It probably I'd probably have bumped the rating up more if the crowd were more into it. They were more they were into it in the last two minutes. Um, but outside of that, they weren't really into it. And that's kind of a shame. In the end. My favourite finish in wrestling happened, where Gunther, uh, oh god, he, he, oh god, he is great. They both went up top for like a suplex or something, Gunther chopped Drew and he fell on the top rope, crotched himself, fell down, Gunther hit him with a splash, hit him with a big lariat, hit him with a powerbomb, pinned him. My favourite finish is just where someone hits a bunch of moves and pins the other person. And Gunther matches tend to have that in a lot. The Dragonov match uh, back in 2020 was very much like that. Um, the Pete Dunne match where he did the massive powerbomb off the top, then hit the top rope splash was like that. So I love that finish. I'm going to give the match four and a quarter stars. You know, the finish was absolutely awesome. If the crowd were into this more, it'd be four and a half. I genuinely think. Uh, and if it, got, if it got like two extra minutes or three extra minutes, I think it could have been a classic. But kind of gets lost in the shuffle of great gun for matches. But, but, you know, still a great match. Four and a quarter stars. Still check it out. Uh, next match on the show. Moving on quickly. Uh... The WWE, sorry, the World Heavyweight Championship match, Seth freaking Rollins, I still hate it, versus Finn Balor. Um, I like the story. I think their match at Money in the Bank was a bit disappointing, and I think I know why now, because they were building towards this match. This match was probably the best match I've seen between Seth and Finn. Uh, probably the best match I think Seth's had since winning that world title. The best Finn Balor match I've seen... In a while. Uh, it was it was great. Uh, Finn working over Seth's arm. Trying to get revenge for the injury he suffered all those years ago at SummerSlam 2016. If you want to see my review of that, please check that out. Completely different environment for that review. Um, and this match told a very good story of, of Finn wor wearing down Seth's arm. Fujiwara arm bars. Stomping on the arm. Working on it throughout the match, but Seth would get little fiery comebacks. Both men would hit pedigrees. Balor would hit a coup de grace for a near fall. Seth hit a, Seth hit a stomp, I believe, for a near fall. Um, uh, you know, the frog splash from Seth, the falcon arrow, and then the, the, the suplex and the falcon arrow. Balor hit a final cut at one point, but neither men did, he did a bunch of shotgun drop kicks and Rollins' head was nearly hitting the bottom row. That was a bit scary. Um, but in the end, neither man could put the other away. Damien Priest came out with the rest of the Judgment Day. Um, and Balor um, hit the coup de grace on Rollins again, I believe, during a distraction. Um, and still couldn't put Rollins away. So Damien Priest put his briefcase in the ring, went round to the other side to distract the referee. As Finn is getting the briefcase... Rollins stomps his head onto the briefcase, pins him, one, two, three. I thought that finish was really, really good. I thought the timing was impeccable. I thought Balor didn't look like he was waiting and staring at Seth to kind of get the stomp done. It looked really, really well-timed. And it's a good finish, and it's a good way to set up a couple of things. You could maybe do a three-way, 
at payback, which I have heard is the possibility. You could maybe just do Damien Priest and, and Finn Balor if you want to go that way, but I don't think Judgment Day should break up. Don't know who's going to turn face out of a Judgment Day split. Would it be Damien Priest or Finn Balor? Either or. But yeah, great match. I'm going to give this four and a quarter stars as well. Uh, another really, really high quality match. Um, and again, I think, as I said, I think Seth's best match since winning the world title. Uh, better than the AJ match, we actually won the title, I think. Because I actually found the AJ match a bit plain. This one I thought had a real story. I really thought Finn Balor was excellent in this match. And Seth Rollins is usually excellent in these big match scenarios. Uh, Semi-main event time. And we have the triple threat match for the uh, WWE Women's Championship. Is that what it's called? Sorry. Uh, WWE Women's Championship, yeah. As Asuka defends against Charlotte Flair and Bianca Belair. First thing, Asuka came out second, which was confusing because she's the champion. She should come out last. It's the way it should be. Um, outside of that, though, the match. In the first 15 minutes, this match went just over 20. In the first 15 minutes, this match was a bit rough. The ladies looked like they were rushing a lot and dragging and dead weighting each other and things like that, which I'm sure they weren't. It just looked a bit rushed. But there was some good stuff, though, like handsprings from Bianca, and she did a handspring moonsault onto both ladies, but they both got their knees up. Charlotte did a moonsault onto both ladies as well. Asuka with a bunch of kicks, and she kept going for the Asuka lock. And Bianca went for the KOD. Uh, Bi uh, Bianca, towards the, the later end of the match, would get pushed over the top rope by um, um, Charlotte and injure her knee on the outside. She sold that really, really well, and she was getting taken towards the back. That went, then left a Charlotte Asuka match for the last five minutes. And then, then, I was like, this match has actually gotten great. Really great. The women were just forearming and slapping each other. Great battle between them. Spears from Charlotte. A lot of big boots from Charlotte. Um, towards the end, um, Charlotte locked in the figure eight on Asuka. But Bianca Belair would fight back to ring. She would hit a 450 onto Charlotte as she um, was uh, in putting on the figure eight. So she hit that 450. Charlotte kicked out. They did another kind of three-way segment between all three ladies. Um, Charlotte got rid of Asuka. She locked in the figure eight on Bianca. Um, Asuka got in the ring, misted Charlotte. I thought that would be the finish. That would have been a good finish. Um, so Charlotte still has the figure four locked in on Bianca. She then goes to get Bianca, but Bianca cradles um, Charlotte. While she's in the figure four, one, two, three, Bianca Belair wins the WWE Women's Championship. The last five minutes of this match were really good. Really good. Like, the, the, probably the last six or seven, really. Um, and, you know, I thought all three ladies worked really hard. Um, but the first, as I said, the first 10 to 15 was a bit rushed, a bit sloppy. So I'm going to give the match three and a half stars. Bianca Belair wins the, uh, raw, sorry, the WWE Women's Championship. Very good match, I should say. But it does take a while to get there. Um, after the matchup, literally... A minute and a half after the matchup, Eo Sky's music hits. Her and Bailey run down to the ring. Bailey takes out Charlotte with a briefcase, takes out Asuka with a briefcase. Uh, she gets taken out by Bianca, but, but Eo takes out Bianca's knee with a briefcase, takes her out with a briefcase, cashes in a briefcase, goes up top, referee rings the bell over the moonsault. One, two, three, Bianca, sorry. Eo Sky wins the uh, WWE Women's Championship. Love that. Love Io Sky. I think Io Shirai is a terrific worker. I want some really good Io Shirai matches with Asuka. Some singles matches with Asuka. Some singles matches with Charlotte. Some singles matches with Bianca. And to eventually lead to a singles match with Bailey, I imagine. I think Io Sky's worked really hard since she got brought up to the main roster. She's such a fantastic worker. She'll be better as a face. She needs to really be a face. Her moveset is so well suited to being a face so let's try and turn a face pretty soon um but no this was a pretty much you know what it was i, I didn't expect eo to cash in um when bianca won i didn't expect eo to cash in i just thought we would get like the win and it would be like a gutsy bianca performance but no cashed in it was cool i don't rate cashing matches because you're usually really short 
Um, one of the better cash-ins in, in recent memory, though. Cool. EO Sky is the champion. Three and a half stars to the, the three-way, and then I don't rate the, the cash-in much. Uh, and then we move into the main event. Tribal rules? What's it called? Tribal rules? Tribal combat? Something like that. Tribal combat? Tribal combat for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship. Um, and, apparently, and recognition of the tribal chief of the Anawahi family. Roman Reigns against Jay Uso. These Roman title defences, okay? I mostly think they're really fantastic. I thought the Sami Zayn match in Montreal was outstanding. The Drew match last year was really great. The, the Usos match they had at Money in the Bank, the tag match, the Usos against uh, Solo and Roman, was great, but it was really long. And it was like the last 10 minutes that were great. This match here was, again, really long. This went 36 minutes, and it was really, really long. Okay? I cannot emphasise that enough. But, in the end, I thought this was a really, really good match. The opening 20 minutes or so was just Roman and, and, and Jay trading big shots. So, the kendo sticks got involved, chairs got involved, all that stuff. Jay did a Simone drop through the announce... Uh, sorry. Through the table for a, a table at ringside and that couldn't put Roman away and Roman was like scuttling away through the crowd but and it was like the last 15 minutes where I thought the match truly got great they went into the crowd and Solo came out of nowhere blasted Jey Uso urinagged him through the table they took Jay's dead carcass back to the ring urinagged him again they went for the spike spear combo on Jay but Jay moved and Roman ended up spearing Solo and then Jay speared Roman, and Roman kicked out. They went outside, and Roman and, um, and Solo caught Jay with a super kick out of nowhere. And Solo was staring at Roman like, you speared me? Like, why did you spear me? And they're just looking at each other, and Jay spears Roman through the barricade. That was a good spot. Um, and then Jay super kicked Solo, put him on the announce table, splashed him through the table. And then we got Roman back in the ring, and... They did a great segment where, where Roman uh, and, and Jay were having like a, a little battle and Jay speared Roman. He went up top, hit the splash. One, two, somebody pulls Jay out of the ring. And who is it? Of course, it is Jimmy Uso. Who else could it be? Jimmy Uso pulls Jay out of the ring. Jay is absolutely beside himself. Doesn't know what to do. Jimmy Uso super kicks. Super kicks Jay. Throws him in the ring. Roman spears Jimmy. Uh, sorry, spears Jay through a table. One, two, three. This match was longer than that recap, obviously, but a lot of it at the beginning was just chair shots, cane shots, and just slow Roman stuff. The last fifteen minutes is where it's really at. It was great. It was really, really great in the last fifteen minutes. And I'm going to give the match. Roman retains the uh, undisputed WWE Universal Championship. I'm going to give the match three and three quarter stars. The reason I'm not going to give it four is because I don't know why the finish happened. Jimmy has no reason to turn on Jay. None. They won the match at Money in the Bank as a team. And I think this is elongating this Bloodline feud for no reason. The Bloodline story, which everyone keeps going on about, is the greatest story in wrestling. And I think that's mostly fanatical WWE fans. It's not. It, it's not. It's you're, you're kidding yourself. Since last November, so before War Games, before Sammy joined the Bloodline, that is when this story's gotten really, really good. But since then, it's gotten a bit muddled. <laughs> A few times, uh, you know, if Cody had won at Mania and then we'd gone into kind of a, 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 a bloodline civil war without the belt, I actually think it would have been better. As I said, I still am an advocate for Cody winning at Mania. I can't see why he wouldn't have won. Um, so Jimmy, to me, turning on Jay seems like an unnecessary wrinkle to this story. I assume the two of them want to do a match together and maybe they'll get to do it at Mania next year. But that is still eight months away. So it's probably more likely Survivor Series or even just the next pay-per-view, which is payback conveniently. But yeah, I'm going to give the match three and three quarter stars. The, the J interference just bothers me. Um, I just don't see why. 
But that was the, the way the show ended anyway. Roman walks up the ramp and Jay is upset in the ring. And I think he at least played that well. Like he's more sad that his brother had betrayed him than sad about the title loss. And that's important because that should be more important to Jay Uso, his relationship with his, you know, twin brother. Um, three and three quarter stars, though. It was a very, very good main event in the end. It just takes a while to get there. And that was SummerSlam. So honestly, if you look at the show, I gave the opener four, the second match four and a half, the MMA rules match two and a half, and then four and a quarter, four and a quarter, uh, three and a half, and then three and a quarter, three and three quarter. I genuinely think this SummerSlam has a chance of being one of the best SummerSlams of all time. I think if you look at the grading of matches across the show, it is pretty consistently high. There's no match that's five stars, but the, the Cody Brock match is unbelievably good. And the, the Gunther Drew match, the Rollins Balor match are really great matches. And so is Logan and, and Ricochet. And the main event is really, really good. So I think if you're grading on like a curve, this show has a really good consistency. I know that SummerSlam 2002 is, is you know, the obvious exception or the obvious show to point to as a better SummerSlam. Um, but that show had, you know, Test and Undertaker, which you could argue is better or worse than the MMA Rules match. I think people sometimes overrate that Chris Jericho Ric Flair match. Um, maybe not remembering that it's not as great as you probably think it is. And I know there are great matches on that show. Edge and, and Eddie is a great match on that show. Obviously, Rock and, and Brock. Uh, the HBK uh, Triple H match is a fantastic match. Probably rivals the Brock Triple uh, Cody match on this show. But this show, to me, maybe it's because it's contemporary and it's recency bias, but I think this might be the best SummerSlam of all time. Anyway, you guys let me know in the comments what do you think is the best SummerSlam of all time. Is it this show or am I being silly? Um, but that is going to be the review, guys. I'm going to give SummerSlam 2023, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I thought this show, from top to bottom, on a card that I was quite looking forward to, really delivered. I think the Cody Brock match was outstanding. Balor and Rollins had a great match. Gunther and Drew had a great match. Just not as great as I wanted it to be. And everything else, like the Ricochet Logan match was great. The, the the main event got great in the end. The women had a great segment towards the end of their match. And the MMA Rules match was there, but at least the right woman went over in such a clean fashion. So yeah, 9 out of 10. I thought this show was great. Is it the best summer slam of all time? You guys let me know. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. This has been Rob Rossalat. Hopefully, we're getting some more videos up for the channel soon. I've got a couple of weeks left of summer, so let's try and get some videos out. Um, as I said, maybe all in. Maybe that's the next time I see you. Fingers crossed. But um, anyway, let, let me know what was your favourite match of the show. For me, it was obviously Cody and Brock. What was your least favourite match of the show? For me, it was the MMA Rules match. Uh, which match surprised you the most on the show? I'd probably say the Ricochet Logan match was surprisingly good. But it is going to be good anyway, wasn't it really? Like the surprisingly best match was probably the J Roman match. Um, but yeah, you guys let me know what your thoughts on SummerSlam 2023. Thanks for watching. This has been Revolver. We'll